And as we all know, there has not been a lack of risks uh, the last year, and there will be also a lot of risks uh, moving forward. Uh, we are still in the middle of uh, a pandemic, but uh, we have in a very short time also developed uh, effective vaccines. Vaccines that usually can take a decade to develop happened in the year in a unique uh, public-private cooperation. And we also saw at the COP26 in Glasgow that public-private cooperation is crucial to also mitigate risks moving forward and to deal with them. What it is uh, very clear in this report, and my colleagues will go into it uh, in depth, is that uh, in the survey, um, all the respondents are also more and more underlining uh, the environmental and climate uh, crisis that we are faced with. Our uh, planet is on fire and we have to deal with it. And uh, this is a risk that we really, really know. So we cannot say that we are faced with a blind spot. Uh, it is really also clear in the risk report that uh, the respondents say there are two main challenges. One is the lack of implementation of what was agreed at COP26, uh, a lack of implementation possibly on the net zero way of thinking in this century. And the second risk is then related to effect of lack of uh, implementation and reaching 1.5 degrees zero is dramatic weather consequences, droughts, uh, floods, wildfires, and etc. And here is, of course, adaptation measures necessary. The other one uh, main risk that we are faced with, according uh, to uh, the survey, is uh, inequalities and social uh, crisis. We have seen um, growing inequalities, and how are we going to make sure that the social market economy is also using the necessary tools uh, to address uh, these uh, challenges. And here I strongly believe that stakeholder capitalism, that the World Economic Forum is strongly, strongly then arguing for companies also taking increased responsibilities uh, in society is one important uh, piece of this. Short term, we are faced uh, with uh, global supply chain uh, challenges. Uh, we do believe that they will continue also uh, this uh, year. We know there is huge inflationary pressure, and we also know uh, due to the response to the crisis, there is a um, looming debt crisis in the world that also reduces um, the fiscal ammunition moving forward among uh, governments. And here, I also believe that uh, if we're going to deal then uh, with uh, inequalities, we're going to deal effectively also with uh, climate and nature uh, challenges, we do need uh, more public-private uh, cooperation because the private sector can add to this. On top of it, we also see that uh, geopolitical tension and a fractured world uh, is uh, really a big challenge. And the reality with all the main challenges that we are faced with, global challenges needs global solutions. And are those solutions going to be developed in this uh, fractured world? Let's see. Let me uh, put up uh, a bit of the data from this 17th edition of the Global Risks Report. And we uh, adapted our survey this year to understand a bit more about where the global mindset was among the thousand experts that responded to this survey. And first off, it's very clear that this confluence of all of the factors that have come together, all of the challenges that we're currently facing, are leading to a fairly pessimistic outlook. 84% of the people that responded to the survey said that they were either worried or concerned about the outlook for the world. Less than 4% were optimistic about the outlook for the world. Let's go a little bit more in depth into some of these results. Um, we asked people to look back at the last two years of the pandemic and identify which are the risks that became worse since the COVID-19 crisis started. And what's very clear is that um, above everything else, social cohesion has eroded. There are deep concerns about livelihood crisis. There are concerns about climate action failure, concerns about mental health deterioration, and then finally concerns about extreme weather. These five really stand out um, compared to other areas. We could go to the next set of data. 
We also asked people when some of these risks will become a critical threat to the world. And in the next couple of years, there continues to be deep concern around both the climate side of things and the social side of things. So extreme weather, livelihood crisis, climate action failure, um, uh, infectious diseases, of course, the pandemic has not gone away. And so there continues to be concern around that. And then, of course, social action cohesion. On the other hand, if you look at the next sort of five to 10 years out, that's where you see um, a lot of concern around, you know, you can see the top five are all green. So climate action failure, extreme weather, biodiversity loss, natural resource um, crises, uh, and human-made environmental damage. Somewhere in the middle of this, um, which is really the, the next sort of two to five years out, there's concern about climate issues, there is concern about the social issues, but there's also concern around cybersecurity failure. There's also concern around um, geoeconomic confrontations. Uh, so you're starting to see quite a mix of things that are the bridge between the short-term time frame and the longer term. And finally, the last set of data, we also asked people about risk mitigation efforts and how they believe um, some of this, um, some of these efforts are working. Um, the good news is that um, people are generally fairly optimistic about how uh, trade facilitation is being managed, how international crime is being managed. They're fairly uh, pet optimistic also about how health crises are being dealt with or how natural disaster relief is being provided. But some of the new and emerging areas, like artificial intelligence, like space exploration, like cyber attacks and migration and refugees, those are areas where people don't believe that much is being done in the best possible way moving forward.